Be very quiet, everybody. We don't want to startle it. It likes the fruit. I'll go. Huh? What is that? Tiffany Arias sent me some, and it was a block. So I said, well, what is that? So she sends me this thing back, and it looks like a piece of bacon. I, Throw some bacon on it. I said, hmm, that's pretty interesting. Well, I know what it is. It's meat and fat. Yes, bacon is just meat and fat. However, I'm going to go ahead and guarantee this. That's not a piece of bacon. Throw some bacon on it. It's meat and, and it's a, a fat. And I showed a picture of mine. That's the meat. Well, this is a, well, it's this right here. When it was real red. Now it's dried off. It's all, it's been here 10 years or so. Now, so um, she said that's what I thought. Some pieces are huge. And it's this, and it's this same stuff. So you claim that sandstone is actually uh, flesh, muscle fiber, stuff like that. So my question to you is, why do these two look so drastically different? You would think if muscle became sandstone, they would look similar, but they very much don't. That's fat. <laughs> That's, the guy was, whoever it was, was a pretty chunky guy. Red sandstone under a microscope, white sandstone under a microscope. Fat cells under a microscope, muscle cells under a microscope. Two are very different, two are basically the same thing. This is not an example of fat turning into rock. Now this, then the same thing, fat, and then what happens is the blood... Until the day I die, I will not understand this guy's fascination with tapping his fucking monitor. takes in the fat molecules, which are heavy in energy, a lot of energy. The blood takes in the fat molecules? What, what does that even mean? That is literally the dumbest thing I've ever heard. This was another very heavy person. <laughs> <laughs> and they would fill up their fat stores, and then they would deplete them through the blood. What the hell does this have to do with sandstone at all? He's going down here. I think those are rib bones coming down, and then he's coming down through the guy's guts, and then he's going to get down into the uh, intestinal line. As usual, no one in the conspiracy world ever cites their sources or tells you what the fuck you're looking at, so you can verify this stuff. But just a base assumption off of this incredibly shoddy looking video, it looks like all that sediment is the exact same stuff. So somehow, the rib bone is differentiated from the guts and intestines while all being the same material. That doesn't really add up. We're talking about giant creatures so giant this. that no human being can ever <laughs> get this in their mind. Oh, yeah. I'm still waiting for one of these mud fossil jackasses to do some calculations, figure out exactly how big this creature would be, how heavy would it be, etc, etc, because then can we, we can start having the conversation. His Atlas dragon, his dragon in the north of Africa, how big would that thing actually be? How tall would it be? How, is it going to be so tall it leaves the part of the atmosphere where oxygen is dense enough to support it? Because I kind of feel like that's an issue you need to attend to. This is actually the membrane, and that hole right there is where molecules enter into your bloodstream. This is a perfect example of how people like this play this game. I've told you many times I'm not a biologist. I provide links to what I think are useful resources down below so you can learn a bit about this process yourself. Yes, the body does absorb molecules or nutrients, right? That's what the small intestine does. That actual process, however, is much more complicated and different than what he's trying to explain here. So he makes this argument that sounds on a super surface level to be accurate, but upon even the slightest bit of inspection, fails miserably. What we're looking at here is not an example of small intestine lining. It is a rock. That right there is where molecules go in to the other side of the membrane to feed your tissues. No, it's not. Okay, we'll get it back. So don't tell me this is silly. Oh, this is silly. So now it's time for schools to match wits. They're going to have to learn new stuff. So we need to start discussing this. It's just got to be an open discussion. 
Does that sound familiar? Because it should. The teach the controversy approach. Let's have the entire field of science on one hand, and some jackass who pokes his monitor at every possible moment on the other hand, and have a debate as to which one is correct. But you're stupid for not paying attention to it now that there's absolutely no question about it. <laughs> oh, wait, you're serious. Let me laugh even harder. <laughs> and you're also fiduciary failures if you're teaching people. I don't think it means what you think it means. Re repetitive nonsense is not what education is about. Education should be, let's discuss light, and then you show us what you think about light, and we'll show you what we think about light. Show us what you think about geology, and we'll show you what we think about geology, and then work it out. So he's trying to sound very open and brave and future-leaning, if you will, with this concept. But the truth of the matter is, he wants students to go and argue with their teachers that the rocks that we walk upon are human flesh, gigantic human flesh. And again, he's taking us straight out of the creationist textbook, wherein Ken Ham would go tell people to ask the teachers questions about what they're discussing. Are you sure the Earth is really that old? He's trying to sound all open and honest and let's have a discussion, but he's not. He wants people to believe his way, and he wants to use children to do it. It's disgusting. Somehow we have to get this started. Somebody's got to help me because I'm not very good with my wits, but I'm good with matching. Whoa, what?